Morning. Shalom. My name is Dr. Tova Goldfein. This is TMS Roundtable Global. It's Monday night in Israel and early Tuesday morning in Australia. Before I introduce Rose and she'll introduce the guest, I, I just wanted to share <clears throat> with the listeners as you start to join the studio that I came on to be live tonight. I go on twice a week and I was on Sunday night and last Wednesday and tonight there was a blue and yellow um, icon representing the colors of Ukraine flag and there was a sign saying stop Russian aggression see what you can do so I um, Rose and my and myself our hearts are touched to be um, investing um, funds into this company, Be Live, that is supporting peace around the world. And I'm just putting that out there to all of us because when it comes to healing, it's really about peace of mind, peace in your heart. And as Rose says, you know, once we walk the, the path from the head to the heart, we can heal. And um, tonight our show is in honor of peace for the Ukrainian country and peace in the world. And one of our guests tonight is Russian. So it's it's heartfelt for all of us to be here. And Rose, I love our time together. Good to see you. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. You know, tonight we or today for us in Australia, we've got Rita and Tamara. Now, tonight we're going to sort of put the CRPS and also all the somatic um, symptoms together in a, in, a, in a sort of a format that we can actually look at and people can review it and reread it. And now Rita is going to actually give us a, a formula and then Tamara has some other options. So I'll hand over to Rita first and she'll have the floor sort of like maybe 20 minutes and then Tamara. And, and, you know, as usual, we'll make comments or we'll ask you. Or we'll interrupt. Or we'll interrupt. That's right, yeah. But <laughs> on the whole, I'd like this to, that we'd be able to later on put together a sort of a, a treatment or a, a referral guideline on this broadcast. Yes. So thank you, ladies, for joining us again. It's an absolute pleasure to have you both. Thank you. Go ahead, Rita. Okay, great. So delighted to be back with everyone. And, um, I, you know, I was thinking about as a follow up to our last round table, I was thinking about a lot of the mythology surrounding the label of CRPS. And um, I thought it would be helpful to debunk a lot of the, the myths that are floating around and put forth and, and to dispel some of the myths that sufferers may be laboring under. Um, this way, if they decide to embark on the mind-body journey, we can sort of wipe the slate clean for them in a sense. Nice. So Lovely. What a nice way of putting it. <laughs> Wiping the slate clean, starting afresh, starting afresh so that the mind and the body yeah. are healed. And always remember that it's in the heart. So that we need to go. Yes, I think yeah. just clearing out all the clutter, you know, I, I came across this quote that read, um, we are drowning in information and starving for knowledge. And yeah. I thought, wow, that's so applicable to the label of CRPS because when you, when you um, start researching this label, you'll find yourself drowning in it in a sea of negativity. Um, and so the, the first myth I really wanted to um, dispel is this myth of the incurable, hopeless narrative. Um, you know, Tamara and I, we are not unicorns. <laughs> we, we should be the norm. We should be the norm. Um, when, you, when you think of miracles happening, a miracle is simply, a shift in perspective. It's a miracles are common day occurrences. And so that's what we're really here to, to demonstrate. And you should never wait for 
um, medicalized science to give you permission to do the uncommon or to heal. You should never wait for physicians to give you permission because when we do that, we make, we make science a religion and we make clinicians gods, you know? Um, so that was the first, <laughs> yes. the first myth I'd like to address. Yeah. In which, other words, handing over your power. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. And yes, you know, that is the overriding message that you are the expert on you ultimately. And so this leads me to myth number two, which is the myth of the experts, right? And unfortunately, um, there is a blind spot in medicine. There is um, a massive deficit in medical training when it comes to the topic of chronic pain and, and you know, no, dramatically with CRPS. Um, and despite the, the past 20 years of neuroscience research, it, 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 it you know, it, it hasn't trickled down. Clinicians are still practicing outmoded paradigms. And so when you hear, oh, this is the gold standard treatment and anything, just know that the gold standard is always 20, at least 20 years behind the actual research. So, wow. and I think, yeah. Well, that's and I think, true. And I think yeah. with chronic pain, they're even more behind 20 years, wow. <laughs> unfortunately. So I think, yeah. so that's, that was the second myth. Mm -hmm. um, the third myth I wanted to debunk, and this, this one's a doozy, the myth of the label, of these diagnostic labels. You know, one of the ways that the medical industry creates tremendous unnecessary iatrogenic suffering and, and, and an epidemic of fear that we find ourselves in is through these diagnostic labels. Um, we need to take the power away from, from these meaningless assignations that are simply used for the purpose of insurance billing. I mean, they really don't tell us anything about the cause or the treatment. They're, they're just um, empty, hollow designations. And so what these labels do is they create the nocebo effect in wow. the patient. So correct. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's devastating. And, and, and it, it turns doctors into some kinds of prophets of doom in a sense because they, they bestow you this, this, this horrible label and the, the patient is filled with fear and a sense of, of hopelessness. And so yeah. it really has um, a terrible iatrogenic effect. Um, and, you know, on the topic of um, labels... Just to, just I would, to explain yeah. what iatrogenic is for the listeners. Yes, iatrogenic is a term when science unwittingly causes um, negative side effects in the patients um, through their treatment. So their, their labels or their, their diagnoses or their treatments actually um, create... Um, more, more symptoms, more symptoms, yeah. or a bigger problem that than yeah. there actually yeah. was. It compounds it. Yes, yeah. and yeah. and you know you see this in every field of endeavor, not just with chronic pain. Um, I I've seen it in the field of autism as well, but <laughs> that's a whole other topic. Mm -hmm. So, excuse me. So, yeah. So going back to the labels in the mind-body world, you know, we're familiar with a lot of the common labels um, like fibromyalgia or, or irritable bowel syndrome or interstitial cystitis or um, repetitive stress injury. All of these types of labels that we, we know are TMS that are just mind-body. But lately, there are a lot of um, trending labels that I find highly dubious and so i wrote some of them down and i thought i would <laughs> i thought i would oh, share maybe brilliant so go ahead yeah yes so Excellent. um so some of the ones that i see a lot lately are um chronic lyme epstein bar bacterial viruses which 
doesn't make sense. Um, multiple chemical sensitivity, um, peripheral neuropathy, which is not an actual disease, um, pelvic floor dysfunction, erythromyalgia, and um, central sensitization, which is really nonsense, uh, a nonsense label because central sensitization simply means neuroplastic brain-based pain. Um, and then my favorite of all, um, this one makes me laugh, um, idiopathic syndrome disorder, which you might as well just say, we don't know, nothing, nothing, we don't know. I mean, it, 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 it it's, means nothing. Um, Rita, if I could interrupt, that means yes. I, your doctor, have no slightest clue what is going on <laughs> with you, but I have to give you diagnosis. Right. That's exactly That's right. what it means. And the more words, the more scary words you see in your diagnosis, once it starts going beyond two or three words, this is TMS. Yes. And the word syndrome, that's a big red flag. If you see the word syndrome or even disorder, it raises an eyebrow. Um, so, yeah, so that was my little um, debunking of the labels. It's a big one. And, it, it, and I'm extremely anti-label, anti-terminology, because it really, um, it pathologizes things that should not be deep pathologize. And, and this brings me to my next myth, which is um, you really see this in this in the world of CRPS, this term um, remission. And, you know, this term is not apt because it implies a pathology like cancer. And, you know, one, one of the things that Dr. Sarno was very adamant about was repudiate the physical. And we need to depathologize chronic pain and especially CRPS because this idea of remission is, is really silly. Um, there's no remission for the human condition. Um, we, we are emotional beings, we have emotions. And so you can't go into rem remission when it comes to emotions. Feelings. Right, so, so this term remission is completely not apt for CRPS. So throw that out the window. <laughs> so um, so the, my next myth, which is, um, we're up to myth number five, um, is this idea that a person's ability to heal or their speed of recovery is somehow contingent on the duration, the severity, or the diffusion of their symptoms. And nothing could be further from the truth because symptoms are irrelevant. Um, you, it, it comes down to your mindset and your belief system, which can change in an instant, which can change on the, a turn of the dime. So whether a person has full body CRPS for 20 years or a person has CRPS in their pinky for one day, their ability to heal is the same. Their speed to which they heal hinges on their change in mindset. So um, it's irrelevant. <laughs> so I, I just wanted to emphasize that because there's a lot of um, myths about catching it in time or there's a window and it's all nonsense. It's all the it's all the clinician's anxiety, in other words. I think so. Yeah, mm -hmm. of course. Yeah, because they've got to yeah. have an answer for you, and and when people have got somatic pain, it's it's goes on and on. So the, every time they go to the doctor, they're wanting to have more investigation. There could there must be something else going on. So the doctor is going to be activated by that, and in their activation. They're going to give you more problems to add to your, to your, uh, to your, your package of problems already. So, yes, yeah. yeah so let's not forget. Let's not forget painkillers, the addictive ones. Once people yes, start, and start taking opioids or any other addictive medications, that reinforces the message. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yes, it does. And we have an epidemic because of this blind spot in medicine. I mean, you you know, this is part of the iatrogenic suffering is the opiate. Well, that's a good example of it, actually. Yeah. It's a, it's, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, and so this brings me to myth number six, which is the myth of fragility. And, you know, we are not Fabergé eggs. We humans have managed to survive for almost 300,000 years on the earth. Um, so obviously we can't be that fragile as a species. And I think unfortunately there's, you know, so many myths about the human condition that are just really defy um, logic and evidence. So, so yeah, we're not Fabergé eggs. <laughs> um, so my next myth, um, this is a, a larger category and it's myths propagated by the media. So this is a big one. Um, I, I really want for anyone watching right now, be wary and discerning of websites, message boards, support groups, charitable organizations, and even YouTube videos um, that ostensibly are, it might seem like it's for information sharing, but really be careful because they tend to be um, very problematic, filled with misinformation and often toxic. There are very few outlets that are truly for information sharing the way the round table is or the TMS wiki is or, or you know, there are people in our fields like Dr. Dan Ratner or Dan Bulio, and they have wonderful channels of their own on YouTube um, in the mind body world that are really there for the purpose of information sharing. So those, you know, I, I think I came across this really shocking statistic over 70% of all media is subsidi subsidized by big pharma. So you can draw your own conclusions from that. I was really shocked to read that. And so, you know, be very careful on, on, on a lot of these support groups and message boards and such. They can be very, they spread a lot of fear and a lot of myths. And yes. so- Look, could I just add to that that really, Fear sort of breeds fear. And yeah. we go for information and we go for reassurance. Yeah. And then we get the reassurance that you've got a problem. So, again, it goes back to fear. And, and you know, the other thing is that I'm always very aware of the lack of trust. Who do you trust? So people will actually go to a particular site or, or group because I can trust those people because they've got the same problem as me. Or, you know, they're the gold standard. I like the way you put that, the gold standard, whereas it's, uh, it's old gold, it's not new gold. Right, <laughs> so, right. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, and um, yes, that's absolutely a pitfall that maybe um, Tamara will touch on, you know, the reassurance seeking and the, um, be, be careful of, of where you, find your information because if there are people who are suffering and lost themselves, you're, you, you really want to focus on the success stories and the people who, who, who know how to, to get out of this, to reverse this. You. You, you don't want to be wallowing in, in um, um, suffering with others, right? That's not productive. So, um, so, uh, I'm at my last myth, <laughs> so this is my last one, um, and I'm sure there are many more, but these are the ones that oh, but you've out. nicely packaged yeah. them. I like <laughs> you covered, so you, covered <laughs> you covered, you covered a lot of ground here. Yeah, but I'm glad. So you know, I so the last one, this really piggybacks on our last discussion. Um, we on our, the last time we were at the round table we we touched on this topic and i just wanted to expand on it and it's the idea of the coping slash managing model versus the curing model versus reversing model shall we say so you know i think that um i was thinking about this i really want to spare people of um 
of dead ends and, and, and rabbit holes, right? And so when you, you have, on the one hand, you have the, the mainstream medical world. And on the other hand, you have the mainstream um, psychotherapy world. And unfortunately, there's this giant chasm or abyss in between where people with chronic pain or, and especially CRPS, they tend to fall into this, this gulch. And the reason really hinges on the fact that we're, we're looking at the coping, you know, a different paradigm, it's a different paradigm. So a couple of examples I wanted to give was, um, you know, you see a lot of these um, clinics that heavily advertise on, on, on Facebook or online, and they advertise the labels, they advertise CRPS, you know, or central sensitization, and they tout themselves as cutting edge clinics or whatnot. Um, but what I want people to understand is that they offer a mixed soup of modalities and they, they, um, they kind of throw everything but the kitchen sink at the patient, hoping that maybe something will stick with some of them. <laughs> and so their definition of success is not the same definition of success that people in the mind, practitioners in the mind body field have. Their definition is, you know, we'll help you cope better, or maybe we'll relieve some of your symptoms, or maybe you can go into remission, another label, right? And so really beware of these types of things. Um, the other issue is standard psychotherapy. Um, typically, um, you know, there's nothing wrong with mainstream psychotherapy or CBT, but typically the ones that you will find in your insurance plan, they are not mind-body informed, unfortunately. And so they will view your pain and or your CR CRPS as sort of an unfortunate um, you know, an unfortunate condition or event that happened to you. And so they will try to help you to cope with this unfortunate event rather than working Change. on, how, yeah, how do we reverse it? Because they yeah. don't view it as learned pain. They view it as, oh, I'm so, so sorry, this terrible, you have this terrible disease. And, you know, let's just, so, so I really wanted to make that distinction between the, the, you know, these two uh, p models. Um, and, and I wanted to spare people of um, not, you know, just not wasting time and energy and money on, on things that will at best help you cope, you know? Um, so. Can I, can I put a plug in for eyes to DP now? So oh, yes. I'm oh, sorry. I meant to mention that, Rose. No, so I'm, I'm sorry. Just, just really quickly. So ISTDP or internal family systems or emotionally based therapies like what Rose does or, um, or, or trauma based therapies um, are much more effective for, um, for, for, for TMS or yeah. chronic. Well, well, what yeah. I wanted to, what I wanted to add is that we look for character change. We yeah. look for looking at life from another angle, you know, like looking at your life from a more open angle and not an, a closed angle. And it's not about changing, you know, now get up earlier and do this or something like that. It's about how you feel about your life circumstances. So, um, you know, when Rita says, you know, watch what you're actually going to, because when you go to a particular psychiatrist or psychologist, you think that they've got a whole spectrum or a whole range, but they don't often. They have a CBT type background and they're wanting to change your actions rather than your internal feelings. So, yeah. So, Rita, thank you for bringing that up. <laughs> yes, but, I know it's a, it's a large topic. No, but, it's amazing. Yeah. It's it's like a, it's like each one is a show in, with it in its own. Yeah, that's and, yeah, um, exactly. We could spend the whole hour. Scott, Scotty, on each. Uh, yeah, Scotty yeah. asked uh, if we could have a list of them. So I'm going to ask you if you could send them, and I'll post them because they're really they're 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 insights that will help people heal as well as make better actions and better behaviors it'll help them 
calm their brain down by mm -hmm. accepting, by being in yeah, the reality. Them in, yeah, it gives yeah, them insights into their thinking. So it's excellent in that yes, regard. It's a, yeah. It helps to dismantle all those false beliefs that have imprisoned them up until now. And it clears, you know, it, 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 it busts the door open in a sense because you can start with a clean slate. You can, it really sets you up for success when you get rid of all of that. Um, um, what's the word? Just, just, just the din and the clutter. Information. And, yeah. And, what you said before, what did you say about having a, a sea of information? Yes. And, we are drowning in a, we are drowning in a sea of information and starving for knowledge. Yeah. And yeah. so, we have to filter out all of the noise and and go within and and see the the truth and um <coughs> and right and so um i think i think we all have that inner knowing <laughs> and truth and we have to follow that because True. A lot of the information out there doesn't make sense and it contradicts each other. That's right. But Rita, we have to trust ourselves that we know what we're doing. And part of what's happening yeah. is we haven't ever built out our own trust in our own lives. You know? Yes. And true. yeah. So. Yeah. Yes. So camera, what's camera? Go ahead. Why don't I would like you to respond to Rita so we so, can so yes, yeah. so just imagine you are now enlightened. Um you you had this epiphany. Rita set the stage. Now you see the light, and then what do you do after? Um, what she described information versus knowledge. Um very accurately describes my state of mind after I read Dr. Sarno's book. Because before I got to his book, uh, my head was absolutely filled with enormous amount of noise and information about CRPS. And I faced that tragic road to complete incapacitation. And all of a sudden, there is Dr. Sarno who brought the light into my life. But how do I get out of it? So how do I get from where I am to the pain-free life? And this is, uh, I think Rita and I both answer pretty much the same question every day on the TMS forum. The question is, oh my God, I've been doing this uh, you know, reading uh, Dr. Sarno's book or Dr. Schubert's book or whatever, following this method and that method. And I've been doing this for entire three weeks and I still have pain. <laughs> and if I didn't heal in three weeks, it's got to be structural. My pain has to be structural. It cannot be TMS. And this gets us to the first issue that people face when they start, or when they get on the, the path of healing, and that is doubt. And the doubt is twofold. One side of doubt is what I have cannot be TMS. My pain is so real. My swelling is so real. My muscle spasms are so real. My diarrhea happens every three hours. It is real. It cannot be product of pain. Well, remember, your pain is never in the organ. It originates in the brain. Sometimes it's legitimate because you cut your finger. Sometimes it's legitimate because bad bacteria sits in your stomach. But a lot of times there is no bacteria, there is no cut finger, but brain continues to send pain signals. So you have to start believing that it is, in fact, TMS. And then there is a second side of a doubt, and that is, oh, you know, all these people who overcame, and I'm reading all these success stories, oh, my God, this Rita and Tamara, they're superhumans. 
bonkers. We are normal people with fears, with doubts, with paranoias, uh, with stresses, we break down. We're just like you. We were only able to just stick through it and get up every day after we fell down the day before. That's it. Just keep trying and you will succeed. But be smart about how you're trying because repeating the same thing time and over and expecting different results is a definition of insanity. So check how you're doing things and course correct. So believe in yourself. So next point, everybody faces fear. Remember, chronic pain is generated by fearful brain. And so this is where I would like to quote an amazing fearless woman, Marie Curie, who overcame horrific difficulties in her life and succeeded. She received Nobel Prize. This is what she said. Nothing in life is to be feared. It is only to be understood. Start assessing your fears rationally. Start discerning them. Start um, understanding them, where the fear comes from, and you will be able to get over it. I have a fear of heights. Each time I have to climb the mountain, I actually analyze and um, decide for myself, well, I will have fear at this spot and at this spot, but I will make it through. And I, and I do. Wow. So understanding your fear is very important. It's part of desensitization and visual, visualization techniques that mountain climbers actually do. Very good so, point. I'm going to interrupt you. Um, yes. Th and thank you for that. Um, Lorraine, who I love when you come, Lorraine, to visit us. I haven't seen you in a while, and I'm really happy to see you. Lorraine has, you know, a neurological diagnosis, and she has a good question, and I thought about it right at that point, um, you know, because she's, she's stuck. She healed after a long time, 95%, but she's stuck, and I, I don't... I want her, I would like her to believe through getting an answer from you that she stopped for a reason. Can you see the uh, question or should I read it to you? Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Yeah, I see the question and um, can I can I continue? Yes. Uh, maybe it will Same cover the points for Lorraine. So, uh, but fear is specific when uh, it's a, it's a, evolutionary mechanism that is developed for us to survive in the wild, right? So when yes. the tiger jumps at us, we are wired to feel fear. But then there is something else, unspecified fear. And that is called anxiety. Anxiety is much worse than fear because it just generates that jittery state of body and mind and you don't even know what you're afraid of. You're afraid of everything. It creates paranoia. It creates, it's a positive feedback loop that continues feeding on itself and continues destroying you as a rational, capable human being. So we really need to deal with our anxiety. And I will talk more about it. There are there is the best way to deal with anxiety is mindfulness and meditation. I'll talk more towards the end, how you deal with anxiety. Um, there is, there was this amazing uh, doctor, Dr. Claire Weeks, Weeks, I'm not sure I pronounced your, uh, your name correctly. Weeks. Dr. Claire Weeks uh, yeah. from Australia. Uh, God bless her. She did amazing work on anxiety, and I recommend everybody to read her book or even more so to listen to her tapes. They Doctor, were can you spell her name? Um, yeah, just like the week, W-E-E-K-S. Yeah, we can the week. She was the so, Dr. Sarno of anxiety, basically. Yes, <laughs> I would say yes. She was a pioneer in anxiety. Weeks, W-E-E-X-K, I'm yes. sorry. Weeks. Yes. 
W W E K S. Like, yeah, we'll like, put it. We'll put it in okay. in the notes later. Yeah. Um, so yes. Yeah, so um, she passed away some thirty years ago, but she continues healing people, and uh, we'll never forget uh, forget her. Uh, she saved me. So uh, the next thing, and and you talked a little bit about it, Rita, uh, and. Um, Rose, emotions, your emotions and your mind and body, they're all connected. And if you try to heal, if you try to get uh, rid of your chronic pain by focusing on uh, all kinds of mind body techniques without considering your emotions, you are skipping a very important piece of equation. It is very important to get in touch with your emotions, to recognize how they roll through your mind and how they roll through your body, because all the emotion is a flash of hormones. And once you learn how to flash those hormones through your body and follow them mentally, you will be able to control your emotions much better. Um, and that is... I think, correct me, Rose and Tova, that is a really foundation of all the somatic uh, therapies and yeah. mind body techniques. Yeah. Um, could, I, so, could, I, could I do a little add? Uh, there? Absolutely, yes. It's not so much to control your emotions, it's to acknowledge them because they've been repressed. And remember, exactly. they've been impressed for good reason. So don't yeah. ever think that that repression of them is a bad thing it worked when you were little but it no longer works so just be aware that it's not letting it's not actually managing them as tamara said it's about seeing them happen seeing them happen within ourselves in the moment yeah thank you very much rose it's a very important correction i definitely misspoke not controlling not managing but Feeling yeah. the emotion and letting go of it instead of the criticism of, of it, of the criticism exactly. of it, or the criticism, yeah. or becoming a victim of your emotions. If you feel right. anger and you smash something or punch somebody in the nose, you are falling a victim of a negative emotion. You right. need to be through it and let go. And that yeah, is the whole topic that we can talk probably for another hour. So that's I would right. like to go forward with it. So the next step that you really need to take in order to heal, you need to understand a deep difference between cure and healing. Cure is somebody gave you a magic pill. You took the pill and you woke up next day and you are completely cured. <laughs> Healing is when you become your own doctor, when you stop searching for magic pill, when you stop searching for some, I don't know, they plug you into some kind of equipment and you just sit there and then you walk out of it and you're healed. That doesn't work. You need to do that very difficult inner work work of understanding yourself your thoughts your emotions your reactions to the world everything that is called mindfulness and i'll talk a little bit more about it so uh you need to learn how to understand yourself accept yourself for what you are without judgment that's what i want to say that, that's what i want to say to lorraine because lorraine has a relationship with the five percent that she can't seem to, I mean, she did, obviously she's a hero and a victor for doing the TMS approach and getting rid of 95% of trigeminal neuralgia, which is like, whoa. And then there's this 5% where that's the relationship and the feeling, what I think underneath that is like, um, what's wrong with me? Why can't I do it? I'm fearful. I'm going to have to live with it. I'll never be able to put the window down because the wind is. So there's a relationship and a fear and you know, what I've learned in these last two years hanging around with Rose is that there's there's um, 
it's like if I want that, I'm not going to get it because I'm not seeing the healing happening. I'm waiting for the cure. And Lorraine, I want she's already cured pretty much, pretty much she's cured. But it's like that relationship is the conflict. And under that is the emotions that you're talking about. And the character that obsession was 5%. That actually, thank you, that actually takes us to the next item, which is feeling stuck. Everybody feels stuck at some point. Oh, my God. I felt stuck so many times. And this is something that actually um, I did not see in Dr. Sano's book, uh, but I learned for myself and I write about it in my book feeling stuck and being in a plateau, non-linear recovery. You, you know, you can't expect that every day you will get through that 1% or one-tenth of the percent. No, your recovery comes in fits and bursts. And sometimes you have setbacks. Sometimes Dr. Sarno described it as extinction burst. All of a sudden you have outbursts of pain. And people get scared of it and they get really paralyzed by it. Oh, my God, I was doing so well. And all of a sudden, my back pain is better, but my knee hurts or my, my migraines are through the roof. Uh, that means that I will never recover. No, that only means that your brain decided to produce some other signals of pain and accept it. Calm down and keep keep doing your work that's it continue of course yes yeah so persistence persistence yes. and accept this is this is and normal self compassion once, self compassion <laughs> exactly once you understand that extinction bursts plateaus all those things are normal and your plateau can be 2 weeks can be 3 weeks my longest plateau in my recovery was nine months. So it took me um, close to a year to be able to snap a finger on my left hand. And then another nine months to do it on my right hand. I freaked out so many times. And then the moment came. It was amazing. So be patient. It just takes long. And so, Lorraine, you're 95%. Stop obsessing it uh, about it. Uh, oh, oh, we've lost her. <laughs> that was a test for 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 for, for Tamara. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so she'll get back to you, Lorraine. But um, did you want to comment? And and uh, first of all, I told you, Scotty, who's just an incredible fan has um, asked for the um, eight myths, so we'll send that to yes, him. Yes, definitely. And yeah. um, Tamara will be back in a minute. Did you, anyone want to comment about anything? Um, well, I think just to add to it, Tamara said, it's a process. It's not, you can't be results oriented. You have to be process oriented. And it's not about getting rid of symptoms. The faster you want to get better and get rid of symptoms the longer it will take <laughs> so what does alan yeah. gordon say about outcome dependence um yes the, um outcome independence okay. it's it's not being attached to um uh, results or outcomes it's yeah. doing things yeah well that's that plateau isn't it yeah yes yeah yeah so can you see me here, Nina? Yeah, we're here. Yeah. 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 I don't know yeah. why I got kicked out. I was probably uh, too hard on Lorraine. <laughs> Sorry about that. She's really grateful. She's very grateful. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, just relax. You will be at 100% as soon as you give up the obsession with 5%. That's it. Uh, that's Enjoy true. your life. Move on. That's it. It's um, when you caring when you stop giving a crap is when the magic happens <laughs> when you it's know such, it's such a paradox it's it such a, like when you say painkillers what do we do in cms we love the pain 
we accept the pain and we go through it and it goes away. It's like a paradox. We have compassion for it because it's an ex it's a it's a somatic expression of our emotional pain. So we have compassion for it and we we accept it and and we own it and we embrace it. <laughs> so and, and there is a huge difference between compassion and feeling sorry for yourself. Mm. And Rita, I think you 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 have some really eloquent um, uh, paradigm for that. You talk about being victim versus being a warrior. And feeling sorry for yourself means a victim, being a victim. And you're not putting yourself in the fighting mode. You're putting yourself in a pitiful mode. And so there is a big difference between compassion and victimization of yourself. Compassion means understanding of your abilities and also your limitations and accepting them and working with them. But feeling sorry for yourself, I threw my towel in, the world is against me, I'm just here to suffer and there is no hope for me. That's the biggest difference. True. Yeah, so, I think people yeah. conflate self-compassion with self-pity. And it's not the same thing. It's giving yourself a break. It's it's not being so hard on yourself, recognizing this is hard. This is hard work. This is not easy. Um, changing yourself is a lot of work and it takes courage. And so, yes, you're going from the, the victim's um, story to the hero's journey, to the victor narrative, victim to victor. <laughs> so... Um, yeah. Yes, so it's 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 more of a re reclamation, reclaiming your power ultimately. Yeah, and and that gets us to my next point about encouragement, reassurance, and celebration. This is the exercise that you have to go through systematically, day after day. Each time you feel defeated, this is what you need to tell yourself: look back and say. Okay, three months ago, I felt this much pain. I was at 10. Now I'm at 7. Yes, it still hurts, but I made progress. In my case, it was a very serious dystonia, muscles contractions, involuntary muscle contractions. So each time I would look at how I can open my fingers and how I can make a fist, how, how, far, uh, how far my fingers can go. And I look at it and I go, come on, you made so much progress, you will get better. So you really need to get into the business of celebrating every little improvement and stop worrying about what you have not been achieving yet. Whatever, it's just your victory yeah, I've gone so far. I don't need to worry about, um, you know, running the whole marathon. Um, a dear friend of mine is ultra marathoner. So he tells me that whenever he runs his 50K in the mountains, he doesn't think about how to get to the finish. He thinks about how to get to the next aid station where he can get a drink. That's the mentality that you wow. need to have. Wow. That's perfect. No. Yes. Tom Tamara, you've talked about your journey, which is lovely, and you know, like noticing your fingers. Could you also mention how you noticed your heart? Because uh, this is the other, your heart. Your heart. Oh, my heart? How yes. I noticed my heart? Yes, yes. <laughs> well, I don't, um, I'm, I'm not sure I, uh, I understand what you mean, but. Um, my journey, what what happened was that, yeah. yeah. So um, you know, I I used to really be tough on myself, and I used to always be unhappy with myself, and um, really berate myself for every mistake, until I started realizing that it, I'm I'm my my very own enemy. And so once you start 
thinking about accepting your limitations and understanding that you are not a superhero, you are not a super person, you you are not you are not a perfect perfect human being. Um, you really start looking at things very differently, and all of a sudden. Uh, you stop when you need to stop instead of pushing yourself to exhaustion. You give yourself enough rest. Your emotional level, your sense of anxiety and fear somehow starts coming down. To drop. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if that answers the, the question. It sure right. does. It sure does. Because when you when you talk about these things, you're talking externally. And really, we need to always think and speak internally about what the change is in ourselves, you know, our, our, our character change and how we see ourselves as perfect, imperfect human beings. Because yes. none of us are perfect, but we've actually had to try and be perfect to please others. And Sano will call people people pleasers, but in actual fact, it's an insecurity thing in us. Yeah. that we need to make everything right. So that's why, you know, you've actually, you, you, you've you given us a really good example of believing in yourself, but we also need to see how you believed in yourself within your heart. And that's why I always say, go to your heart, because that's the joining space between the mind and the body. Because the body uh, is the gut and the mind is the head and in the middle is the heart. And it's just, you know, our hearts are made for love. And the first love is to be loving our own, what would you call what, like incompleteness or whatever, you know, that we're not ever we're going human, to be. Perfect. We're human. We, do, we, we, yeah. we, 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 we hold the bar so high and we don't do it for others, but for ourselves, like it's like not fair. Remember what um, yeah. doctor, um, this, major, this amazing psychologist who's a doctor in ISTDP, um, what's her name, Who who's doing teaching the, the ISTB therapist, she said, um, you must treat... Patricia your, Coughlin. Patricia Coughlin, treat, if you can treat yourself like you would treat a small little puppy or a little child, <laughs> that would be a key to healing. And it was yes. so... It it's was so true. Powerful. Yeah, yes, yes. So... Um, also, very important is to have a support team. And your support team does not necessarily have to be your family members or your closest friends. I can tell you, my family members never believed in uh, Dr. Sarno's theory or TMS. I have two people in my nearest circle with medical degrees. And they, to this day, one of them believes that, you know, I had some kind of a placebo healing or whatever. Um, so uh, don't give up on them. They're still your family. They're still your friends. Stay, continue loving them and receive their love. They're just not part of your support team. Your support team can be a stranger. Your support team can be a friend of the TMS forum. Yeah. And those have to be people who can see, continue reinforcing positive message. Go on to TMS Wiki. You find amazing people. You find your support team there. Even if your husband or your wife or your mother do not believe in TMS, stop fighting with them. They will never exactly. join your team. Just go find other people have your support team who believe in you and then start helping others because once i start helping others i actually start healing better wow so it's true yeah do that and then i think that brings us to the last point and rita can probably help me with that um <laughs> neither one of us actually used any kind of structured method that was made ready for us. I tried Nicole Sachs. I tried Alan Gordon. Something did not quite work right for me. Guess what? I came up with my own method. And so did Rita, right? 
Yes, it was, there were no um, programs wrapped up in bows back then. This, this was back in, you know, 2013 and it was way before all of the coaching and the YouTube channel. I wasn't even on Facebook. So it was a lot of trial and error. For me, it was a lot of trial and error. Um, I was fortunate enough to have therapy with the, the, the pain psychology center. Um, so that helped me for the support piece, you know? And I had the wiki, which was my lifeline, the TMS wiki. Um, but, but really I cobbled together what made sense to me, what resonated to me. And I read many books and if, if things didn't resonate, I, you know, I took maybe one gem from a book and threw the rest out. And I never, um, just remember read. Alan Gordon threw Sarno's book across the room with his mother <laughs> handed it to him. Steve <laughs> Zange did the same thing. A lot of people did. Yeah. And I mean, even as, even as a coach, I don't use prescriptive program at all i it's not a um it's not a cookbook recipe everybody's different so you collaborate with your client to figure out well what makes sense to you and what are what are your um you know life issues and what are your barriers and your and whatever so it's it's very customized and and there's no right or wrong and there's just sort of a general framework you have to address. And I mean, I even wrote down, you know, the ingredients a person needs to, quote, be successful, like what you need to have within before you start the mind-body journey. So I wrote down a few traits that really set you up for success. Um, so should I list them? Yeah. <laughs> yes. okay. Okay. Okay, so We're recording. This is going to be on YouTube forever. Okay. <laughs> so this is this is what I came up with, and I really, I think if you have this, you will be in really good shape. It's half the battle. So, number one, you need to have a certain level of buy-in or commitment. Meaning, Do Dr. Sarno always told people, accept the TMS diagnosis. So. If you can decide to be all in, meaning you're going to stop all treatments and all, you know, whatever <laughs> alternative, whatever things you're doing, and you stop doctor shopping and you make the decision to go all in with this approach, that will set you up very well. So number one is decide to go all in. <laughs> um, and usually by the time people find me or 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 any of us, <laughs> they're at that point where they're ready. <laughs> so, um, and the second ingredient would be to um, suspend your disbelief. And this is what Tamara touched on, you know, you might have some doubts in, in the beginning and that's normal, but if you can just at least suspend your disbelief just enough to absorb the information. Could yes. I just mention? Yeah. Put that in the context of being a skeptic. Yes. So you can be the most. So every, nothing else has panned out. Let's say you're the most skeptical, cynical person. Like I am. I was a cynical person, but nothing else made any sense. Nothing else has worked. You're still. You have a choice. Do you want to? You know, do you want to try something new or do you want to keep going down the same rabbit holes? So at a certain point, you have to decide, you know what, what do I have to lose? Let me just suspend my disbelief and try this. And nobody's asking you. Or feel the fear and do it anyway. <laughs> yes. I mean, and yeah, and that leads me to the a couple other ingredients, which is have an optimistic outlook. You know, just try to try to tell yourself, you know, other people have done this. Why shouldn't I, you know? Um, and so, and the next one would be having some grit and fortitude. And what I mean by that is taking a risk has to be less painful to you than staying stuck. And, you know, you have to get to the point where you are just so utterly wretched that anything is better than staying where you are. Um, and then, and lastly, I would say the last ingredient is just to really understand that this is not a physical journey you're embarking on. It's, it's an emotional, spiritual journey. So if you can really understand that and, and accept that, you will be set up for success if you have those ingredients.
this is totally doable. And you know, I, would like I just to want to say we up. are, if we, can we all agree that we are um, spiritual beings living in a physical body? Like, is that, did I say it correctly? I think so. Yeah, yeah em embodied spirits. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and so um, that's all I want to say. <laughs> yeah, good. I can add something to, to what Rita said okay. that uh, you don't have to possess all those qualities outright because I was none of those. I was never positive. I was never, I was always skeptical about myself and my abilities. I was the most negative person on earth when I started. I literally brainwashed myself. And you know why? Because number three ingredient, I did not. Oh, she's gone again. Where did oh, she go? Cliffhanger? Is that what it's called? Um, where is okay. she? The number three ingredient. The optim I think she was talking about the optimistic outlook. Here she comes. Okay. Yeah, she she comes. <laughs> Ah. A blank screen. I Camera, know. Where did she go? Maybe I it's the Wi-Fi. Yeah, we'll we'll see her in a minute. R Rita, oh. while yeah. while we're waiting for Tamara to come back, yes, uh, would, I'd like to us to just open up the idea of where the starting point is, and and would you talk yeah. about, you know, like that space that you need to actually do that reflection. And that's often yeah. in your breath and your conscious breath. Uh, yes. Yeah. Or well, about meditation. Just go into that space so that people can see that there's more to the story. Um, the space of, are, are we discussing mindfulness? Do you mean the space of what, staying in the moment or? You're the, whatever you want <laughs> okay. to say. All of okay, it is cool. good. So I think that, Okay, so obviously, you know, what you've been doing up until now has not been working for you. So you're at this point where you're looking at this, you're in this liminal space, if you want to call it that, where you're looking at the unknown, right? And you have to decide, do I want to walk through this liminal space and enter the unknown? And, oh, where's Tamara? I just saw her. I'm going to just, um, can you just tell, can you just text her? to restart oh. her computer. Tell her to restart her okay. computer, to go okay. to close it and come in again. And that may be the, okay. that might see. be it. Cause I know she's trying to mm -hmm. scream on and Okay. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. Again. Okay. Again. Sorry. Again. sorry, I think oh, I got cool. another window, I another tab opened in my browser. So that's what happened. Oh, okay. Oh. So, yeah, so Rita and I uh, talk sometimes about people who reach out to us and, um, you know, and we usually do a quick assessment. We say that person has not reached the bottom yet. Oh, they're not ready, maybe. They are not ready. They're still looking for magic pill. They're still looking for a doctor. They're still looking for something else because they didn't get to the point that this is the only way out. And that is very important. So you really need to, not in your brain, but in your gut, in your heart, understand that this is the only way out. And then you will start getting results. And that takes time and you need compassion and patience and okay. love and hope and belief exactly. with this chemical, Rose. And? Well, in actual fact, you don't necessarily have to fully believe. You have to leave yourself open. And like in ISTDP, we, I don't look for a person that fully believes. I want them to self-reflect and work out why they don't believe. And then that way, it brings them into another space. So, and that's what I love about ISTDP, because it actually gives you a formula to actually go there and this is the big gap that isn't spoken about. And it's always about you've got to believe first. But the belief is so hard that you've got to have that reflective power 
enhanced so you can get yes. there and it's not always easy and it doesn't come that it does it just you're very lucky if it just comes overnight that's all and yeah well, yeah one thing is like you know, just feel that you learn you we're learning this that's where there's yeah. a slight you know bit of behavior modification that's happening here we are learning a new pathway a new language a new life this is what we're learning and it takes time and and patience yeah well, but Tova, what i'm trying to say is that it does take time but actually turning around to actually achieve it is the very very difficult yeah. thing and and but it can be know, done it can be done exactly it can be done and there's a formula i suppose you might put put it that there is a way of creating that self-reflection I, I think, you know, one thing I wanted to add to what Tamara was saying about um, there comes a point where you have to stop searching outside of yourself for exactly. some magic bullet, right? And this, is, this, this, this ties in with the concept of radical responsibility. Mm -hmm. So the way I know people are ready for coaching with me, for example, is are they ready to accept that ra that responsibility and take ownership because getting back to that idea of the victim narr narrative um the only true human pathology in my opinion is victimhood so the most powerful tool that you have in reversing tms or crps and shifting out of helplessness and dependence to true empowerment is the tool of choice and and Dr. You know, Victor Frankl talks about that very eloquently. Your, your biggest tool is choice. So we can, we always have a choice. We can choose our thoughts, our behaviors, our attitudes. We can, we can choose to repress our emotions or we can choose to feel our feelings. We can choose to live in the past or we can choose to stay in the present moment we can we can choose to change or we can choose to remain stuck and wait for something or somebody else to to fix us or save us and finally you can choose to believe and and so you have the choice if you want to believe that you can get better and and believe in yourself so i i just wanted to really um emphasize that that choice is the most powerful tool you have um if if i have another couple minutes yeah, yeah I, would go like ahead. To, I'm sorry. I would like to actually <laughs> um put the plug in for mindfulness and meditation all these things that we talked about is really uh coming from the concept of mindfulness when you look at yourself sort of from outside into inside you're mindful yes. about your feelings about your uh physical responses about your thoughts and that is only achievable if you truly start learning how to meditate meditation is really an exercise in mindfulness and people think that meditation is just sitting somewhere in you know in a shrine or whatever in a temple for two hours and chant and all that no 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 meditation can be quick could be five minutes to sit with yourself um i credit meditation for my healing i ended up meditating for a very long time for hour hour and a half and what it did despite my complete skepticism over meditation because I don't know how to sit still for three minutes. Um, I eventually learned that by being able, by disconnecting myself from the noise of the outside and really having that rendezvous with myself, it really brought some amazing healing power. It took care of my anxiety. It reduces anxiety dramatically. It reduces fears. It learned, it teaches me how to rely on my own inner resources. So 
Um, I also learned that people with CRPS, um, they should go about meditating slightly in a different way. All these standard meditation, guided meditations, uh, techniques, the meditation apps and all that, they are really catered to a standard, you know, uh, average uh, audience. Uh, people with CRPS, we are obsessive, uh, we are paranoid, we are anxious, and so we need to be very well aware of our conditions, and we really need to be more persistent and um, uh, continue trying to learn meditation and not give up. So um, I, I have a couple tips for people. Uh, if they if they want to to try meditation so number one every person is unique you can't rely on somebody else's guide to meditation you have like Rita said she assembled her own method I assembled my own method the same applies to meditation you have to find your own practice remember that following somebody's uh, structured technique may only get you more anxious actually uh somebody posted a con oh lorraine said she can't journal it only frustrates me and therefore causes more stress the same thing with me i could not journal i uh, could not follow anybody's meditation instructions until i started doing my own thing and then it worked so um Make sure you throw away all the all the instructions and find your own way. Something very important tip: be easy on yourself. On yourself, it didn't work first time. Try again. Try until it works. Do it with compassion and love for yourself, and be nice to yourself. Because if it didn't work first time, time uh, try. You know, when you try it fifth time, it will eventually work. And then. Um, Something really important, somehow I noticed for me, um, somewhere about 10 to 15 minutes into meditation, I start feeling an increase in anxiety. And I think this is normal. I actually uh, heard it from somebody else. And once you get through it, if you persist and continue, you will eventually get into the healing phase of meditation. So try to extend it past 20 minutes. Then uh, you will see the results. And one more, last one, your results of meditation may not show up today. They may show up tomorrow or day after, but they will. There is no such thing as bad meditation practice. Do it. Yeah. Could I add Amazing. to that yes. to actually start on your breath and then on, in your breath create a meditation? And as you say, make your own story. But often it's a good idea to just go with the breath and, you know, like there's all these different types of breathing exercises and, and often people become anxious about those as well. So if you're just conscious of your breath just that's conscious yeah. yes for a start that's the Thank starting you. point yes. yes that's a very good addition yes this is how you end up going into it yeah yeah, yeah. well ladies it's just been absolutely fantastic it really has and um, and if you if you don't mind sort of putting those tips on the side there that would be just yes. Just one. If you send them to the email, I'm going to post them. And then we can put them on. We can put them on um, YouTube yeah, as well. I, then. I, I, I think there's more people in the world that have healed from CRPS. That you know, either I just think it's you, this. We are in the future right now when it comes to healing and to the education and to understanding that we're we're. This is this is this is just the beginning. Of an incredible incredible process and um i know it's lonely you feel like you're the only ones who healed crps but you healed yourself via you know indirectly this was the symptom some some said you know so i 
I, I am in all of you two, complete all. And um, I'm it's so doable. Excited. It's doable, though. Yes. <laughs> we just want people to know this is so doable. Right. <laughs> and yeah. at the end, I, I really would like to thank you, Rose and Tova, for bringing us on yes. and for rooting for the people with CRPS. You're doing amazing work, and thank you so much. It's our pleasure, yeah, isn't it? Very grateful. Yeah, two grandmothers, you know, changing the yeah, uh, the, uh, the world one, <laughs> one one person at a time. Uh, oh, Julie, really hi. So we, we we get to be yeah. We, you know, I I do want to say that I wish Rose and I could find a way to to come on in the evening in America and reach more people. Um, I know it's difficult. We we met through Michael Galinsky two years ago, and we have our own love story and our own professional work we do together. And we just can't figure out a way to do it where one of us isn't up in the middle of the night. So here we are. <laughs> nice to uh -huh. meet you. I'm exhausted. Rose is ready to start her day. You guys are in the middle of your day. And we had some wonderful people watching and visiting us. And um, you know, our YouTube, people can subscribe to the YouTube. We're on Instagram, we're on Facebook. We're here for you, we're here for you. And um, we continue to bring on amazing people uh, on our show, and it's it's not it's not over. It's continuing. So we'll see you, ladies, again. I'm sure. Yes. We yes. would love to come back anytime. Yes, we'll, we'll take you up on that. It's a pleasure. Um, yes. God bless. Take care. And okay. we will put we will put the link to our website. We have a yeah. website. Good. Wonderful. We'd love yeah. to. And you know what? I'm doing a class with um a with little some presence process work, and Glennis, one of our, she showed your book. She said she lives it, 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 it like goes every, and I forgot about you wrote a book. So <laughs> send me the book and the link to Amazon. What's your book called again? Def, um, sorry, define the verdict. Defining they gave me, define the verdict. They gave me the verdict of CRPS. And I said, you know what? I do not believe in it. Good on you. <laughs> Can you believe the courage in a human being? Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're Thanks welcome. so much for having us. You're welcome. God bless. Thank Take you. good care. Thank Bye. you. Bye-bye.